What's up, you guys? Welcome back to more of my Castle Crashers Insane Mode playthrough. It's time to take on the corn boss. At the start of this episode. Um, this guy. Normally pretty annoying because he spins around a lot and he goes into the ground and pops up. And he smacks you with those little leaves at the bottom of his body. But if you have max agility, or close to max agility, and you spam him with arrows, he will stay in his shell and the arrows will still hurt him. Will my magic hurt him? Uh, no. That is a no. Um, some magics will hurt him when he's in his shell, but usually it's just arrows that will hurt him when he's like this. This is a really cool exploit that's been in the game since it first came out, and surprisingly after five years this game's been out, they still haven't patched this, which is kind of weird, but I guess it's not really a glitch. It's definitely an exploit, though. It's something... You shouldn't really be able to do, but you can do it, so... I'm definitely doing it, because it makes this fight a lot easier. So I'm just gonna sit here and spam the arrows. But I want to continue what I was talking about at the end of the last episode. Dragon Ball GT. A lot of people hate it, despite the fact that it has few inconsistencies, and it has really good ideas. Um, somebody took a scene from GT, uh, it was the scene where Piccolo dies, he, they, uh, put in music from Dragon Ball Z and sound effects from Dragon Ball Z, like thunder effects and stuff like that, and you should have seen the comments on the video, like, people were like, this makes it so much better, I would have loved GT if it was like this, blah blah blah, stuff like that. That goes to show you how important like music and stuff is in a game or or a TV series or a movie or anything because it affects you, your mind at a very subconscious level how you perceive things and a lot of people don't even realize it sometimes like just making little little uh, additions like adding a certain sound effect at a certain time can really affect how you perceive something and your views on it. So, I think a lot of people would like GT a lot better if it had better music, because that is one of its weaker points. Dragon Ball GT kind of has a little bit of a weak soundtrack, in my opinion, in a, lo in, in a lot of people's opinions, but still, despite that fact, I, I love it. I don't love it as much as Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball, but it's still really good. And it's, it's definitely better than the Frieza Saga. Come on. The Frieza Saga was not very good. That... That saga was where the power levels really started getting out of hand and ridiculous. And the fight went on so long. Like 50 or 60 episodes. Like the entire Frieza fight. Kai cut down on that. But it's still too long. I can't even watch through the Kai version without skipping ahead through it. A lot of people dislike Dragon Ball Z Kai, too, but... And that's another thing I don't understand. Because I think it's really good. I think they definitely improved the script a lot. And they cut out a lot of unnecessary filler crap. Well, it's not crap. I mean... I liked most of Dragon Ball Z, but still. If you're one of those people that mostly focuses on the action, Dragon Ball Kai is really good for you. Oh, we got the V-Horn from that fight, by the way. So, we'll go to this flooded temple right here. And use... Where is it? Oh, there. Use that to open up this door, and you get, get through there. Now we got these giant fish monsters to deal with. These guys aren't too bad. They do have poison belches, poison belch bubbles that will hurt you. They can also attack you with their spears, but their attacks are very, very slow and their movement in general is slow, so they're very easy to avoid.
Yeah, I think I'm done talking for Dragon about Dragon Ball for now. I don't think people want to hear too much about that, especially if they're not into it. But uh, I don't know. What what animes are you guys into if you're watching this? I like to know what people's favorite anime are. Um I really never watched too many growing up. I watched I watched Dragon Ball Z a lot, obviously. I've seen every single episode more than once. Um I watched a lot of Yu Yu Hakusho. Not all of it, though. I still need to go back and watch that full series. But I definitely liked that a lot. Uh, when I when I was younger and I watched Yu Yu Hakusho, I liked it almost as much as Dragon Ball. Not quite, though. Dragon Ball still takes the cake. And for the first couple of seasons of Naruto, I was really into it. But then I kind of got bored of it. I think it kind of... I don't know, I lost interest in it. Same with One Piece. I liked it. I liked that at first, too, but then I kind of lost interest. But, uh... I don't know. Luffy is pretty cool character. He has really cool powers. Especially when he uh, goes into first gear. He could, he could give, uh, like, very early DBZ stage Goku... A good fight in that form like he gets pretty intense when he gets uh, gear first uh, if, if you didn't notice those guys shishka shishka bob themselves and like steam fry themselves when they die and I don't know if that yellow thing is a lemon or if it's their eyes on the plate when they die But yeah, like I was saying, that's pretty much it for me for animes. Um, if you count, like, A Avatar The Last Airbender as anime, then yeah, I watched that too. Legend of Korra was amazing, by the way. But <laughs> Some people would probably be like, that's not a real anime, that's an English anime. You gotta watch the, the Asian animes, man. But, I mean, anime is anime, whether who makes it. Some are better than others. I know a lot of, like, Japanese do it better, I guess, but I don't know. And Pokemon, Pokemon's kind of considered anime, sort of. Not really, but I watched a lot of that growing up, but definitely lost interest in that, too. Like, the modern seasons of Pokemon are so bad, like... I know Pokemon's kind of always been geared towards kids, but, I mean, wow, the newer seasons are so, so kiddish and so dumbed down, it's ridiculous. I will always love the Pokemon games, though. Always. I will always love Dragon Ball and Spongebob. Spongebob is life. Spongebob is geared towards kids also, in general, but they also manage to make it funny for everyone, which I love. And there's, there's a lot of innuendos and inside jokes for adults, which are pretty funny when they do those. Oh, crap. Yeah, these guys do that dive attack sometimes. Which you need to watch out for a little bit. Please don't jump off the screen. Yeah, that looks like a lemon. I'm pretty sure that's a lemon slice on that plate with these guys. Okay, right here, we're entering a new level. It's Medusa's Lair. I'm going to exit to map real quick to refill my health. That's a little trick you can do if you're ever low on health and you want a quick refill of it. Just exit to map and restart the level real quick. Right here, chicken. It gives a boost, to, a small boost to all your stats. Uh, it's actually, that chicken is actually the behemoth. It's the behemoth logo. Which is pretty cool how they included that in here. Um, 
that chicken is actually the logo that's on the hat that I got for getting 8th place in the Castle Crushers 2012 Tournament of Champions that I wear all the time, by the way. I know I already mentioned that, but I love that hat. If I lost that, I would be sad. So I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the Thieves Forest level, um, there was a uh, little lizard, dinosaur, seahorse, whatever type pet that lets you move faster in water. Yeah, this is the second of two levels in the game that even have water. So, yeah, very useless pet. You don't need to move faster in water if there's only two levels in the game that even have water in the game for you to move faster in. And, like I said before, if you stay in the air a lot and do air combos, you won't even touch down on the water much, so that pet is completely useless. Completely. It shouldn't even be in the game. I don't know, maybe they made it in early development of the game before they really realized how useless it was going to be. Because it really doesn't make much sense to even have it in here at all. But oh well. Like I said, like, if you're just playing for fun and you don't care about stats and stuff, I guess the look of something might make you want to use it. Like, if you, if you think that pet looks cool, then by all means use it if you don't care that it doesn't benefit you at all. Okay, time to get some money and some food. These uh, chicken legs, turkey legs, whatever they are, those are the uh, biggest, or the highest refilling food item. They give you the most health out of all the foods. So, definitely if you see one of those on the ground, you're gonna wanna pick it up before it disappears. Fun fact, if you revive somebody on the edge of water and land, then uh, it'll kinda glitch to where it'll act like you're in, wa in water when you're on land, and it'll act like you're in land on water. So you'll move slow on land and move fast in water if you do the glitch right. And I actually, uh, I was recording, or no, 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 I, uh, I accidentally did that glitch one time, and I turned on my camera and started recording it to show it off. And then somebody explained to me how the glitch works. But, uh, yeah, that video is up if you want to see what it looks like. Uh, I think I titled the video, Castle Crashers Medusa's Lair Glitch. So go check that out if you're interested in it. I really hate these fish. Because they jump after four hits. And their bubbles <laughs> knock me back, which is really annoying. There's so much flinching in this game that's caused by attacks. If you could just take it, that would be awesome. If you could just take the attacks like a man. And something that sucks about these fish also is uh, they don't drop anything. They don't give drops. So I, I can't get food from them with my uh, with my hockey. Oh well, no big deal. This level's not too long. If you look in the background there, there's like a giant fish statue shaking hands with another statue. It's like a... I don't even know what that is. A frog? A lizard? I don't know. It, it's, it's easy to miss a lot of the quirky little details in this game, but if you, like, 
look and see in the background and stuff from time to time, and actually like take in the sights in this game, they're they're really awesome. The art direction in this game is so cool. I love it. Just another thing to love about this game. It's sad that more people don't know about this, because I, I really do think this is one of the best games ever made. Definitely one of the best beat-em-up games. It is by far my favorite beat-em-up game of all time. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm happy for you, and I'm gonna let you finish. But Castle Crashers is the greatest beat-em-up of all time. Of all time. More fish, more snakies. I actually gotta wash my potions here. Because I could run out. The boss in this level can be a problem. And I just died. Awesome! Alright, heading back to where I died right now. Um, as you can see, this game... Yeah, it's very easy to die on insane mode if you're not paying attention. And, uh, definitely before I died in, in this level, I totally forgot to use my saws, because that's really good on these fish. Because not only will you instantly do the four hits to make them jump, but you'll also knock any other enemies in the area out of the way, so... This is a really good strategy to killing these guys. I definitely should have remembered to use this because I've played this game quite a bit. A lot more than I should have. I haven't played Arena in a bit though. So my Arena skills might be a little rusty because my Xbox Live Gold ran out. I need to renew that. I hope, uh... I hope Behemoth holds another tournament this year. That'd be pretty awesome. And I will take the gold this time. Literally. The prize is a golden Xbox and a golden controller. Literal gold. Like, it's real gold. That's what that's what the winners won, the two past years. Nah, in, in all honesty, I don't think I could ever win first place. I'm not. I don't quite have the good enough reaction time, and the skills and the strategy to win first. But you know, it's it's fun to participate. I like participating in contests, regardless of whether I'll win or lose. That's why I'm doing all the community verses on the Versus channel. Those have been really fun to do. Speaking of that, today's Sunday, so tomorrow they're gonna post a new one. Awesome. Sorry, I'm concentrating a little bit. I don't want to die again. That would be bad news bears. Speaking of bad news bears, Resident Evil 4. <laughs> Everybody's probably gonna think, how is Resident Evil 4 related to bad news bears? No, uh, it's cause Super Genius says that, and he, he recently LP'd that. I don't think I'm gonna be completing my Resident Evil 4 Let's Play. Because really, the only reason I started that was because Super Genius was playing that. And honestly, I was not having fun Let's Playing that game. And I think I kind of want to end it prematurely. <laughs> Sorry to all the people that were actually watching that, but... Yeah, I'm kind of discontinuing it. <laughs> Even though it was very few of you that were watching it. I know I always say that, but... 
Let's Plays aren't all about the views, they're to have fun. But when you're getting single vi digit views, and you have like 700 subscribers, <clears throat> it's kinda annoying. I didn't mean to get rid of my, uh, my dildo. This one gets plus five magic, plus three speed. It's actually really good, wow. I'm gonna keep this weapon. This is actually the first time I've ever used this one. It's pretty good, I'm surprised. La, 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 la. Yeah, I'm just singing while brushing my snakes. Because snakes need to be brushed, apparently. Alright, uh, right here's Medusa. She has snake hair that can shoot um, poison balls at you. And if you get too close, the snakes will strike you. But other than that, she's pretty easy to avoid. Yeah, I like that. And she has stone vision that will turn you to stone. Unless you avoid it or block it. Yeah, for some reason, shielding against that will prevent you from turning to stone. Which is a little odd. Oh, and she'll also do that. She'll release tiny little baby snakes that don't really do anything. They just kind of knock you back if they hit you. But that's about it. I guess I'll show what happens if you get turned to stone. Really, that's it. You just have to wiggle the control stick to get out. Or do the little trick where you hold the control stick in D-pad opposite directions to instantly break out of out of uh, controller events. I don't know what you would call those. But, uh, yeah. Speedrun tactics. I need to keep stuff like that in mind. And I need to be careful. You have to get kind of close to use the saws, so... Oh, yeah, there we go. That's, that's some good hits. Right there. Too bad I won't be using this guy in my speed run when I attempt it. Crap! I almost died again. It's not good. Alright, she's she's finished now. Actually it benefits me for her to use that attack, because she kinda stays fixed in one vertical location, so very useful. And she drops a weapon, but I already have that. Like I said, when those stats come up, you can exit to map, and you'll still get credit for beating the level. I need to buy potions, I almost forgot. But, uh, I think that's enough for this video. So next time, we'll take on what might be tied with M Marsh for hardest level in the game. It might be a little harder, actually, though. This is the full moon level. So in the next episode, I will take on that, and we will be very close to beating the game. The last level's up here. But anyway, I will see you guys next time, and I hope you're having a great day.